Mmm, Thok. Yum yum Thok. I like Thok. Uh. Thok, Goober, no. What are you doing here? Ooh wee. I'm gonna build the Thokiest keyboard. Mmm, Thok. Are we really doing this again? Howdy, hey. I'm Hippiotech, and I put Thok in thumbnails because it makes you click on this video. Today, we're gonna tackle one big challenge. Thok. But first, I have to rescind all of my previous videos and redefine the word Thok. Now, in the community, I've seen Thok referred to as a million different things. Like, some people just consider it a good keyboard sound as Thok. Some people say the opposite of clack, whatever that is, is Thok. Bruh. But, I'm gonna rescind everything. You know what? Thok is just deep Bruh. sounds. That's it. Deep sounds. So, RIP to all of my old thumbnails. You know what makes deep sounds? Electrocapacitive keyboards. Yeah, not mechanical keyboards. We're revolutionizing everything. By revolutionizing everything, I mean, this has already been the case forever, like Thok was invented to describe Topra boards. Maybe, don't quote me on that. But in this video, I'm gonna set out to build the new Thokiest keyboard. By Thok, we mean deep. Remember that, keep that in the back of your mind. Granted, deep is just as subjective as Thok, so this is, yeah, this is a hopeless pursuit. But in this video, I'm also gonna set out to build my dream keyboard, which it is not this. Look at that spacebar. I'm gonna be lubing some electrocapacitive switches, which I've never done before and then Frankensteining a keyboard together. It's gonna be really bad. Disclaimer, I might go insane. But I'll be doing this in the quest to build my dream keyboard, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, why is your dream keyboard plastic? This is ridiculous. You could have any thousand dollar keyboard. You're a keyboard YouTuber. We'll get into that right after you get into the subscribe button. Thank you so much. So in my time, I've tried literally almost a hundred keyboards. And at the end of that, I always kept coming back to this dinky little thing, the Nizplum X87. There's something about its light, pillowy switches that just kept drawing me to it, no matter what else I tried. Full disclosure, I have not tried Topra yet, but I want to. This has honestly solidified a spot in my daily driver rotation, like as the main daily driver. But there's just one problem, and it's that it's a little bit too big. I need a smaller size. So this is where the Niz Micro 84 enters the story. This was sent to me for free by EpoMaker, and you can check it out via the link down in the description. Now, in any normal story, I would get this keyboard, it would solve my size issue, and it would be a perfect, happy little hippio, new daily driver, blah blah blah. But, as you can see, this video is disturbingly long, and there's much more to the story. I'm on a quest to build one of the thockiest keyboards. Well, remember what we said at the beginning? Mmm, thock. Yum yum thock. No, not that part, the, the deep part. Anyways, this bad boy is 224 US dollars, which is one pretty penny. At first glance, it's basically just the Niz Plum X87, but shrunk down to a smaller size. But there's a few quirks here that make it a little bit different. Now, one of the main quirks is that this bad boy is Bluetooth and supports wireless over 2.4 gigahertz as well. And it's shrunk down to size with a cramped little right arrow cluster, Bruh. but I can get over that, kind of. It has a plastic case, which is a little bit of a bummer. But, you know, the keycaps are pretty nice, and th that's good. But we won't even be using those keycaps. Really, what we care about here is the case, which I know, plastic case, but it, this is the key. This is the key to Thok, guys. I am no sound scientist, but in my opinion, plastic and polycarbonate tend to sound deeper than metal. Uh, if you're a sound scientist, slide in my DMs, please. I need some explanations. So this kind of just looks like a sleeper agent of a keyboard. The type of thing where you'd see it on somebody's desk and be like, ah, that must be a $12 thing from Walmart. No big deal here. But what we're after is the switches that are in this thing. And this is what makes this build so frustrating and starts the struggles that I've endured. Some of you might know what these are, but some of you also might not. For those of you that don't, imagine Membrane went to MIT, got a PhD, came back and got a really high paying job. Okay, okay. Basically, it's a rubber dome on top of an electrocapacitive PCB. It uses a spring and a slider, it has a very nice tactility, and it's very punchy. Speaking of punchy, when I saw the spacebar, I wanted to punch the wall. Now, this is where all of my problems begin. This is a 4U spacebar that I did not realize was on this keyboard. I thought at first, ah, I will get the Micro 84. My problems will be solved. It will be smaller. Everything is good. And then I saw this. Niz decided to kick me while I was down and throw in CoStar stabilizers on top of the 4U spacebar. Now, if you watched my tape mod video, you know I really don't like CoStar stabilizers. But hey, it sounds good, so I'm gonna have to come up with a solution here. Now, I want to keep the small form factor, but I don't want to keep the small spacebar, as it's pretty annoying to type on. 
and co-star stabilizers suck. So I had a magical flashback, also known as a jump cut to an old video. I remembered the Niz Duo 82 that I reviewed a uh, really long ago. The Niz Duo 82 I thought was going to become my daily driver. It was perfect in every way. It had the big space bar. It had the stabilizers. It looked really pretty. It had a solid weight. It had everything. It should have been perfect. But there was one glaring issue. It had an abnormally tall front. And I mean like an abnormally tall front. This thing was really rough to type on and hurt my wrists quite a bit because of this. And I was just so sad. I was devastated. Keep that in the back of your mind. We'll come back to that. So my first thought with the Micro 84 was to just take off all the keycaps, see what I could do. And then it kind of hit me that I don't own a single keycap set with a 4U spacebar. There was literally no way I could mod this thing and swap out keycaps to keycaps that I would like. Now, because of this, there's no way it can have a place in my Hall of Fame or, or be my daily driver. But I had an idea. An idea I thought would be so simple. I thought, oh, the Niz Duo 82, it has a PCB. It's electric capacitive. It's 75%. It's got the same form factor. I'm just going to copy paste into the other case. It's going to be easy. <sighs> yeah, that's not foreshadowing or anything. So Bruh. here's my brilliant plan laid out. Take the Niz Duo's PCB, put it in the Micro 84. Done. That will solve all my issues. I like the case of the 84, but I don't like the case of the 82. I like the PCB of the 82, but not the case of the 84. But then wait, what's this? Hippia wasn't thinking? <laughs> that never happens. Oh, right. So the one part that wasn't interchangeable was the plates. I could not put the plate Bro. of the 84 on the 82. Different stabilizers. Duh, why didn't you think of this? And it doesn't fit in the case because of these little tabs. Of uh, The tabs! No, <laughs> why didn't you think of the tabs? So I panicked. I got devastated. I was ready to give up. And then I had a better idea. Toby, I need help. Toby, help. My God, Hippio, are you okay? Are you dying? Uh, kind of. Yeah, my my plate won't fit in my keyboard. You, you're pl okay. I got you. As long as you shill for me. Okay, what do I have to shill for? My keyboard group buy. Okay, Toby's got a wooden KL90. It's in group buy right now. Check it out. It's super dope. Here it is. Look at it on the screen. Wow, that's so great. Okay, now, um, please help me. Please, I need to cut, just cut the plate for me or something. Do something. Okay, all right. I'm on my way. Seriously, I called Toby at 9 p.m. and he was like ready to help out that same day. So because of that, I had to tape up the keyboard and get it ready for Toby. Now, I could have just popped these out, but I was much too lazy. So I just taped it up so it wouldn't get anything in it while he cut it. Because Toby did this for me at 9 p.m., I don't have any footage of it, but just imagine a footage of Toby cutting it with some type of power tool. He's a carpenter, he's a woodworker, that's what he does. Then, with my special delivery from Toby, ta-da, it's a plate with no tabs. Originally, I thought this was a stainless steel plate, but realized it was a brass plate after he cut it, and it was brass colored. Oops. It would probably have more thock if it was uh, polycarbonate. This, this just hurts to say, even. But, as you can see, there's a little bit of warp here around the spacebar. Apparently, the saw kind of got stuck in, like, I don't know how saws work. So, there's a ton of warp around the spacebar stabilizer. I don't know if this will cause any issues, but we'll revisit that soon. Uh, the foreshadowing, it definitely totally did. But you know what didn't cause issues? This Crytox 205G0 that I'm gonna use to lube all of the switches. I've got affiliate links for everything used in this video down below if you want some for yourself. So, this is my first time lubing Niz sliders, and I did not see many tutorials out there online. This could not be the main method to do it, I was really just winging it. I went three strokes on each slider, and that was it. Or, I guess maybe these are housings and not sliders in this case. I did three strokes on each housing, the stems I just ignored and then just put in there. In this case, I thought Crytox 205G0 would do the best, and I really didn't use a lot, just enough to make it a bit smoother and a bit, uh, deeper. Next thing you know, it's done. I just put this in, I just screw it in, bada bing, bada boom, the build is so done, right? Right? <laughs> no. This, uh, this turned into a massive nightmare. So not only is there like 14 or 15 Bro. screws that I have to screw in every single time, just go up. I uh, ran into a few issues along the way, as this was my first time working with an electrocapacitive keyboard. Basically, there's springs in between Bro. the rubber domes, and if those get misaligned, then you're gonna have a bad time. And you gotta take it apart again, all 15 screws or whatever. Woohoo. Uh, then I decided tape mod was gonna be the real thing to do here, because it's trendy. Also, Bro. I feel like tape mod does tend to lend to a deeper sound, and I wanted to try it to see if it would do anything on an electrocapacitive board. I really don't think it's doing much here, but it was fun, I guess. 
For this one, I just went with three layers of blue scotch painter's tape as I felt like any more would have messed it up as far as fitting in the case goes. It already caused a tiny bit of issues. If you want to see my other video where I do a tape mod, click the link in the top right later. Anyway, speaking of case, this case does not have a lot of room to get crazy with, but I like a deeper muted sound for my keyboard. So in this case, I'm going to be going with some foam as I felt like a silicone pour might be dangerous around a battery. I mean, to be fair, foam is probably dangerous around a battery, and I would avoid doing anything to your keyboards if they have a lithium-ion battery. They're incredibly flammable, and they'll catch on fire if punctured. Like, just don't do this. I'm not a professional, I'm just a man who's risking fire hazards. So yeah, just remember the age-old slogan, if it's got a battery, don't do that, viewer. Anyways, thinking my build was entirely ready, I decided to slot it in and commit to the point of almost no return. So, number one, I'm worried that this thing won't make a proper connection to the daughter board of the Micro 84. Number two, I'm worried that it's gonna fit- wait, it fit? Oh my gosh, it actually fit. Holy moly. So, I guess now we just have to worry about the electronics working. Um, if, so I'll just plug it in and cross your fingers, everybody. What? It lit up? It lit up? Oh my god! All the keys work? Oh! This is the most excited I've ever been. I Frankenstein two boards together. Everybody please clap, please clap. But I was in for a massive shock. Uh, no pun intended with the electric passive thing. So this uses cherry stabilizers now and I figured they would all work perfectly fine. But an issue was about to happen with the spacebar stabilizer that arose from the warp. So much warp, oh my gosh. No. Why? Why, God? Ugh. So I got frustrated, smacked it around, and opened it back up again. Now, at first, I thought it was a problem with the actual stabilizers, so I did a lot of fiddling with them to see if anything was going wrong. I didn't know it was the plate yet. And then I thought, oh, well, maybe the switch is in wrong or something's going up here. I, I was a little bit confused. Now, imagine me rinse and repeating opening and closing the case with trial and error for about two hours. Now, how I ended up fixing this was I took pliers in between that little gap in the plate that you see and just stretched it out and ended up with this. It worked. I don't care. So that ticking is horrible and I've troubleshooted it a lot, and it's really hard to get it to go away for a long period of time. I'm gonna have to swap the stabilizers at some point, but I'll do that later. It also gave my plate quite a bit of warp, but you know what? It's sealed back up. Now, I won't spend any time on this, but the keycaps I decided to go with are my Infinikita Lite prototypes. Uh, the set's no longer in group by, but it's my keycap set, and it's my dream keyboard, so that's what I'll be using. These are just dice of PBT. They tend to sound a little bit deeper, but if I was going for Omega Thok, I would use taller profile keycaps, but I really don't like using those, so I'm not going to use those in this build. So I guess technically I had done it. I Frankenstein two keyboards together and tried to make a keyboard as Thokky as possible. Okay, we're going to just, uh, the th word Thok, I've, I'm canceling it. Basically, this has the best of both worlds for me. It's got the case height that's comfortable to type on. It's got the layout that I actually enjoy. It's got a space bar that is reasonably sized and not for you, thank god. And most importantly, it's got switches that I really enjoy typing on, which is a very good perk. You know what else is a good perk? I just released another song on Spotify, it's called Serpentine, and click that link in the top right to go give it a listen. Please, just blast it off. You're hearing it right now, it's really good, I swear. So, in conclusion, I'm calling this Deep Thok. It's my dream keyboard, and we're gonna just leave it at that. You can go see Thok Goober if you have anything to say about the word Thok. But I'm not done yet. There's gonna be a part two to this at some point soon, and it's gonna be a lot more deep. So stay tuned for that. A final thank you to all these people that joined the Hippios Chosen Tier member. There's a lot of them. Thank you so much.